Let me just got your Bible with you. Raise your hand if you got your Bible. Amen. Raise it up in there. That's where all I can see right there. One Bible, two Bibles, three Bibles. Man, we got a war in here, can't we? That's what I'm talking about. You smile like you ain't got your Bible. <laughs> she said, I don't. <laughs> Amen. I'm just playing. If you have your Bible, turn to the book of Acts, chapter 28. Y'all uh, y'all be in much prayer. We're, we're trying to figure out what to do with the pulpit uh, financially. I found some, but we're just trying not to waste what we do have. And, uh, so I'm not too good to use these things here. It's okay. Uh, but they're working with thousand fifteen hundred 1500 for the ones I was looking at. So y'all just be praying with us. And, Amen. Yeah, we're trying to do something different. Acts chapter 28, if you have your Bible. Y'all remember that song we used to sing? So I won't be shaken. No, I won't be moved. Because my God is faithful. His promise is true. So I'll speak to the mountain. Oh, it's time to move. Y'all done forgot that, you? My God is bigger, better, stronger, greater than you. Y'all that y'all y'all remember the song now? Yeah. I can't be Oh, come on, stand to your feet. It's part of the message, don't worry. You take it off my preaching time if you want to. Give me, give me 58 minutes instead of our. So I won't be shaken.
I'm just so thankful uh, for Jesus and what he uh, done for us that we, we can celebrate this. Amen. Amen. Now, I know the, the Egyptians, uh, uh, the Israelites that come out of captivity, Kenny, back in the Old Testament, uh, is what we celebrate the Passover for. Uh, you remember when the Bible said that the death angel would pass over the door? Uh, so they would celebrate that. And now we celebrate for what Jesus done in, in that Holy Week. We'll, we'll dive into that here again. Acts chapter 28. Hey Amen. I want to give you what, to the best of my ability, what I really feel like God wants me to mention tonight. Uh, so, so, yeah. To the best of my ability. Y'all know I can't speak plain half the time. <laughs> Spluttering and all that. Amen. I want to speak something to you tonight as we dive into the Word of God. How many are so thankful for His Word? Amen. You know, the, the hype's awesome. The, the, the church, going to different churches. We went last night to another church. It's awesome. Uh, we're preaching to other churches. It's awesome. Chasing conferences. It's awesome. But after the hype, you have to have the Word of God in you. I'm not saying they don't preach the Word because obviously we won't go to a conference if they didn't preach the Word of God. But uh, you, you have to have uh, the Word of God down inside of you. Or, Kenny, if not, when the storm comes and the battles come and the hype's gone and the people that has hyped you up ain't around, Alex. Your, your pastor ain't around. Your buddy ain't around that, that lifted you up and prayed that pa powerful prayer that that, that one that feel like he can just pull heaven down, he's not around, and everything's just so dead in your life, and it feels like whatever's going against you. Uh, you need the word of God to be able to pull that back to you. Hey Amen. I know that window's distracting. I'm sorry. No, the kids were the kids waving. They was waving. Uh, I, I found curtains. I just we we just waiting for financial things. You know, that was fifteen hundred dollars. So be patient. <laughs> but I did find some curtains to put up. Anyways, Amen. Uh, I have found out that Alex, the hype or the excitement or the screaming uh, and, and the, the, the hollering out of it is so good. It's so great. And, and when you when you find out, feel like you're in bondage, sometimes that stuff is what you need to do yeah. to get out of bondage. Yeah. Now, I'm not preaching against it because we preach for that stuff. When you're in bondage and stuff, you need to open your mouth and begin to scream sometimes. <laughs> it feels good and it helps and it breaks stuff off your life. But when all that's gone and you're all by yourself, Alex, the only thing that you have is the Word of God, what's down on the inside of you. Amen. What's on the inside of you that you can pull out uh, at the time that you need it. Oftentimes, I talked to a guy the other day, he came here, and I'm about to get in, dive in head first, and we'll stop talking and we'll start preaching. And he, he was nervous about starting to preach again. Uh, and and I, he said, I feel like I'm reading, I don't understand, I'm reading, I'm not getting nothing out of the Bible. But how many knows that's not your job to understand? Amen. Oh, I got quiet. It's not your job to, to, yes, we dig in, yes, we dive in, yes, we study. But it's not our job to fully understand the Word of God. And it's not our job to, to, to fully uh, quote from Genesis to Revelation. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Yeah, that's right. Now, it is our job to study. It is our job to show ourselves approved. Yeah. It is our job to open the Word of God and begin to dive in and eat of the Word. Uh, but it's the Holy Spirit's job. The Bible says it like this. At the point in time that you need it, the Spirit of God will bring it back to your remembrance. Yeah. Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Well, EJ, it's the Spirit of God's job to remind you or to tell you what it is that you need to say. You read somebody will start talking about something, you ain't, you ain't read it in four months. And, and Michael out of nowhere, you're like, man, I, yeah. And you start quoting stuff, and you're like, man, how do I know that? It's the Holy Spirit that yeah. brings this stuff back to your mind. Amen. So we'll dive right in. To Acts chapter 28. Now, if you've read, read your Bible, we know in Acts chapter 27, there's this man named Paul uh, that was a slave at this time, and, and they was on a boat, and they was trying to go, uh, I think it was to Crete, uh, and, and they sailed, and Paul told them, you know, you shouldn't have sailed, but they sailed anyways. Uh, and I'm just telling you the story before, before I get into the word. And, and anyways, they was on this boat, and there was a storm that came so bad called Eurachlodon, and, and it began to uh, uh, bash the boat and all of that. And we know the story that eventually the boat uh, kind of got broken up, and they got shipwrecked on an island. Amen. So that's where we're at now. They're on this island. Uh, so this, this man of God named Paul uh, was a slave, and they was traveling, and uh, the, the, this, this storm coming so bad. It destroyed the boat. Now they're on this island shipwrecked. And this is where we're picking up at. Acts chapter 28. 
Acts chapter 28. The Bible says, And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island uh, which Malta. called Malta. How you say that word? Malta. Malta. I say Malta. Is it Malta? Okay. That the island was called Malta. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, every one, because of the present rain and because it was cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them uh, on the fire, how many has read this story before? Uh, how many has been in church and been preached to you before? Uh, if you've been here, we've done preached like three times. God just keeps giving stuff, don't he? Ain't that good? And Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire. And came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hanging on the hand, uh, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, uh, whom though he had escaped from the sea, yet vengeance suffereth, suffereth not to live. Now, I don't know about you, and I'm, I'm really about to dive into this. I just want to throw this out there because I, I like the Bible and we, we like to read different translations and studies and stuff. There's a, another study in the Amplified uh, that changes that word vengeance suffers not to live that these people, the barbarians talked about uh, the sun uh, not the sun, the, the, the uh, sea god uh, but they changed that word vengeance to justice called the avenging goddess uh, of the sea and the barbarians said that in another translation said that the, the, the sea goddess that they believed in uh, suffered for him to live and make it to where they was at. And then he got bit by the snake, and I just thought that was neat. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit, when they looked, when he should have been swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, uh, but after they had looked great a while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. Amen. I want to read this one more time in the Amplified Version, and then we're going to take off. After we were set safe on land, it's the same scripture, different translation, we found out that the island was called Malta, and the natives sought us extraordinary kindness and hospitality. For they, they kindled a fire and welcomed us all. And since it had begun to rain, and it was cold, and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper crawled out because of the heat and fastened itself on Paul's hand. And when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they began to say one to another, Undoubtedly this man is a murderer, and though he has been saved from the sea, uh, justice, the avenging goddess, has not permitted him to live. Then Paul simply shook the creature off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. But they stood watching and expecting him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But after they waited a long time, uh, he had had seen nothing unusual happen to him. They changed their mind and began to say that he was a god. I, wanna, I want that to stick out in your mind, what this translation says. It says that Paul gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire. And a fire and a viper crawled out because of the heat. And fastened itself on the hand of Paul. Amen. Amen. It fastened itself on the hand of Paul. I want to talk about uh, this three-letter word tonight. There, there's a three-letter word that stuck out to me when I was reading this. Now, this three-letter word, uh, EJ, has the ability to change our lives forever. And I know by now you're probably racking your mind what's these three-letter words. It either can make us, it either can break us, or it can put us on the right path or the wrong path. There's a three little letter word. Either you're saved in here, or you're a, a Christian or a sinner, same, same goes for both. There's a three letter word uh, that I'm going to refer this story to that can make you or break you as a person. Can anybody guess what that letter, three letter word is? Huh? There's one. Nobody ain't going to guess. Okay. The three letter word, y'all might have to wake up. Is giving God er yes. Why yes? There's a three letter word, Michael, that has the ability within itself to completely alter your life, completely change your life, 
set you on the wrong path or set you on the right path. Amen. There's a three-letter word that, that, that has the ability to completely change you. And we're going to talk about that. Amen. When we give the Lord our heart, when we repent, ask him to come into our life and forgive us of our sin, what we're saying is, yes, we repent, we turn from our wicked ways. But when we repent, Alex, we're giving God our yes. Amen. Yes, I'll live for you. Yes, I'll follow you. Yes, I'll pick my cross up daily. Yes, I'll die to my flesh daily. Yes, I'll be a better person daily like we just talked about. Yes, God, I'll be better than what I was yesterday. Uh, you're giving God your yes. So you're not just coming to the altar of repentance, getting your sin under the blood, going to heaven. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's great. But, but you're giving God your yes. When you come to the altar, you say, yes, God, I'll change my way of life. Yes, God, I'll change my stinking thinking. You know, I used to think that I was the only one that said that. I heard that last night at church. I'm thinking, this sucker sold my line. I heard Daniel say it the other day. Tell him, like, I thought I was cool. Everybody's using it. Stinking thinking. Anyways. So when we come to the altar and we say, God, forgive me of my sins. I, I'm sorry. Uh, have mercy on me. You're saying, God, I'll stop what I was doing and I give you my yes. I'll stop the life that I was doing and I'll, yes, I'll live for you. Yes, I'll, I'll serve you. Yes, to the best of my ability, God, I'll, I'll be your disciple. I'll be your follower. And even this, yes, God, to the best of my ability, I'll come to church and, 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 and get discipled. Amen. Amen. And not just get discipled in the church house, but after I get discipled, I can go out there yeah. and get them and bring them in here. So that they give their heart to the Lord and they get saved and they give you your yes, they get discipled and they go back out there. Uh, before we get into I know I ain't preaching yet, so just bear with me. I just missed you guys. I ain't, I ain't seen you in a couple days. We, we actually, uh, we're about to hit it wide open, Teresa. We've been uh, been in prayer about it in secret and praying and talking. And we actually going to try to start in May, uh, at least going one, one, one day a week and, and set that day apart to go and visit people at their houses and love on them and not invite them to our church just to tell them about Jesus. No matter what church they go to, it's all about getting them saved, go to heaven. Amen. Uh, and, and then the starting in June, we're going to try at least once a week to, to do uh, outside street services uh, somewhere. We don't know where yet, but we're, we're planning on going out there and grabbing them and bringing them in. And like I said, it ain't just in here; it's church. You, you know, we'd love that they come here, absolutely. But uh, number one, Kenny, they give the heart to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. How many knows it's so important to go and visit people at their houses? Amen. I remember me and Kenny once, please forgive me for wasting time. I remember me and Kenny once, we went to a woman's house. Uh, she had a stroke and, and she was bed fast. And, and her sister, I think, said that nobody's come and visit her. Her home church ain't called her. Nobody's loved on her, nothing. And I said, well, we're here just to represent Jesus and all the churches. And here we are. And we, we told her who we was and uh, where the church was at. Because she's talking about, I'd like to go to church. We told her where the church was at. Anyways. Uh, that opened up a uh, an access to be able to pray with her, didn't it? And she allowed us to pray with her. I don't know if she repented or not. She was crying. She was crying out to God, and we was able to pray with her. It wasn't maybe a week later that woman died and, and went to be home with the, the Lord, we hope. I don't know her heart. But what would have happened if we didn't go, EJ? What would have happened if we didn't go? And, and, and Mike would do what that, just that one little act of going to visit her and pray with her. Nobody knew that she was going to pass away a week later, but God knew. Yes. And he called us up there, didn't he, Kenny? We went and prayed with him. So to me, it's so important to go visit people. I love it. Okay. Some people love street services. I love that too, but I love one-on-one -on -one yes. at your door front. Let me come in and we drink coffee and talk. I love that. And everybody's got a calling. Everybody's got a purpose that it's neatly fit together for the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. How many believe that? Amen. I love street services with all of my heart. I love church. I love this with all of my heart. I love you guys with all of my heart. There's something in my heart that loves one-on-one -on -one at somebody's house. I love it. Uh, anyways. So so we give God our yes. Uh, when we come to the altar of repentance, God, I give you my all. I give you my yes. I give you everything that I can. Uh, if you still have your Bibles open, read verse 2 again. And the natives showed, I'm going to read another translation. Uh, and the natives showed us extraordinary kindness and hospitality. And they kindled a fire and welcomed us since it had been raining and that it was very cold. Uh, and the verse 3 says this. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, 
and laid them on the fire, a viper crawled out, and because the heat, and it fastened on the hand of Paul. Amen. There's one thing before we dive into the into flat out preaching, because it's it's a preaching message, it's just the way it's gonna happen. Uh, so I want to talk to you just for a second. That there, there's one thing about it that Alex, as soon as you begin to, to get the fire kindled up, Chris, it begins to reveal the snakes. When you get the, the, the heat of the flame, when you get the kindling of the flame, yeah, we're talking spiritually too. When you get the kindling of the flame, it reveals the snakes. There's no way around it. When you when you begin to kindle the fire, once you get the fire going, the snakes will be revealed. Amen. I want you to notice something. On verse number three, the Bible says that the viper, it fastened uh, and bit Paul on his hand. Y'all catch that? It didn't beat him on the foot. It didn't beat him on the leg. And we know around here in the mountains, we know how it is when snakes bite. 19 more minutes. It's hard to use. Usually if you walk up on they're going to bite you in the foot or something. Big pinky toes or something. But, but this time, uh, it beat him on the hand. Why did it bite him on the hand? I know it might just be something you skim over. It might be something that you don't even think about. To me, it's so significant. And I guess it's because we've been going into the 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 seven times that Jesus bled. And one of the times that Jesus bled was out of his hands. And it was for what? The, the blessing of our work. So I believe with all of my heart, even in the spiritual realm, I know physically the viper had bit Paul in the hand. Spiritually, I believe that was the devil's way of saying that if you keep putting your hand to the flame, you keep bundling up these sticks and burning and killing this fire, the, the devil's going to jump out and he's going to try to bite your hand, which represents the work that God has for you. Amen. It's not just a physical representation of his hand, but I believe with all of my heart, Kenny, that that was the devil saying to you, as long as you keep putting your hand to the fire, I'm going to keep jumping out. And I'm going to try to stop the work that you're doing for the kingdom's sake. How many knows that we've been studying, we've been talking about that when, when Jesus died on the cross and his blood came out and the voice of God spoke out of his hands, it was for the blessing of the saints, of the work of the saints from their hands. So what did the devil do, Kitty? The devil tried to counteract that. And he said, listen, big boy, if you keep putting sticks and, and, and stuff into the fire and the fire keeps getting kindled up, I will latch out and I will try to bite your hand. I will try to, uh, I will try to bite and curse what God is doing through you. Does that make sense? Well, man, that should be enough to make you shout. Why didn't y'all shout? Corey shouted. What y'all shout? Wake up. I'm going to give Corey a microphone. Chris, you want a microphone? Mike, we're your microphone. You smile like a possum back there. I like it. <laughs> Amen. That's enough to make you want to shout. Yes, yes. Because oftentimes, and I wish they could be here listening. Oftentimes, Alex, and you take your mom with this because she jumped all over me last night. So she said it, not me. Oftentimes, we go through something and it, the, the, the fire gets kindled up because we're actually doing what we're supposed to do. And when the fire gets kindled up, it reveals the snakes. And when the snakes get revealed, the first thing the snakes do is bite you on the hand. What is your hand? It represents the work that you're doing for Christ. Amen. Oh, ain't that good? Good Lord. Thank you, Holly. Thank you, Holly. Good to see you. Hey, I'm going to go in there and preach with the babies. we got 40 kids. Now, y'all give him a hand. we got 40 kids. I count the babies. DJ, we got 40 babies. 40. Not four. 40. 40. 40 kids in there. Yeah, Michael, he ain't got 10 of them in there. <laughs> Amen. Anyways, y'all missed that one. I want y'all to chew on that. Y'all get that tomorrow, I hope. Amen. <laughs> so the Bible says in Acts chapter 28 that they had sailed through this 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 sea and then the Eurachlodon had caused them to, to shipwreck. Amen. 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 And when they went through the storm, they they, they, they wrecked on this island uh, called Malta, Malta, I said. Malta. Notice they did not try to put their boat back together. Now, if you're taking notes, please take this. Notice they did not try to put their boat back together. But the people of this island showed them kindness and began to build them a fire. And they did not put the boat back together, Chris, but they took the, the boards from the boat and put it as logs on the fire. Does that make sense yeah. to you? They began to take the, the ship that they was in that carried them, that, that, that finally Paul said that the angel before me stood tonight and said that if you not let go of the ship, don't let go of the boards, but if you got to grab a plank, grab a plank 
and float to the island, but nobody's life will be destroyed. That's what happened. Uh, God kept his word. And Michael, the Bible said that no man's life was destroyed. But the, notice that this part in the scripture, it never says, Corey, that they grabbed them same planks that they floated to the shore safely. They never grabbed them same planks and same boards and put them back together and made a boat. They never said they did that. But the Bible says that they took that, that they just went through and grabbed them logs and put them on the fire that they needed for this season. Yeah. Amen. But notice that, Chris, what they just went through, the experience they just went through, the battle they just went through, uh, uh, that, it, that, it, that they used that. They used the flint, they used the, the boards, they used the, the, the planks, they used the logs, they used the, everything they could, Kenny. They used everything they just went through. They grabbed it, they broke it up, and the, the people, the area that they was at already had the fire built for them. That's what the Bible says. That they built the flame for them, but they had to have something to, to, to sustain the flame. So that Paul and them, they went back and they looked and searched and, and they began to find help. They began to find boards and planks and they took that and put it within the flame where they was at. The people began to build them a fire. And when the fire started going down in that area, please catch what I'm telling you. When the fire started going down in that, I want to just say a bonfire that they built for them. This one bonfire. Everybody's been to a bonfire party. Oh, y'all ain't right. Just raise your hand. <laughs> God, I'm talking about. So, so you notice we're at one bonfire, and and, and you, I'm gonna paint you a picture. And we're gonna take off. You, you, you know when the the fire is blazing, Chris. When it goes down, what do you do? You put more on it. Have you ever seen somebody leave a bonfire right here and go over there to the new, another bonfire that's going crazy? Just because of the lack of them putting their own logs into the flame? That's good. I get that. Oh, did you get it? Thank yeah. you, Corey. <laughs> Notice this. That when the fire started going down in that area that they was at, they did not let the flames go down and quit and go somewhere else to get warm with their fire. But they began to grab their own logs and put their own logs into the flame that they was at. They began to get their own wood. They kept the fire going exactly where they was at. The people, the barbarians, made them a fire, and they was getting warm because it was what? Raining, and it was cold, what the Bible said. And they was around this warm fire, this warm fire, getting warm. And not one time did it say that when the fire started going down, Teresa, that, that they went away and started going somewhere else because the, the fire's hot over there. No, but the Bible tells me that Paul and them, they begin to go out and search for their own logs. They begin to grab their own things and begin to put their own stuff into the fire to keep that fire blazing. And the problem is oftentimes, I just got to go ahead and say, the problem oftentimes is, Chris, that we begin to let the fire of our lives go down and we see the flames go down so what do we do? We'll go to this church because this church is booming. We'll go to this church because this church is on fire. We'll go to this conference because this conference is so awesome. We'll go to this deliverance demon cast down kind of been all this stuff. We'll go from this place to this place to this place why? Because our flame is getting low and before uh, we begin to work and poke and, and pride our flame and add logs to our flame because of our laziness, our slothfulness and because we don't want to work at what God's given us to work at. We'll leave that alone and we'll go somewhere else because they're on fire. But I'm here to tell you that the only reason they're on fire is because they're poking and they're working and they're putting what they got into their fire. And the thing Amen. is that the, 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 the bonfire that they made for Paul, it was Paul's job. It was their job to no, go and get the logs, right. their own logs, and put it to the flame. Amen. And the problem is, is they was cold and it was raining. And the fire was handed to them. The fire was handed to them, Chris. But because there's work involved to keep the flame up. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Amen. You never read in the word where it says they left that fire that they these people made for them. Somebody's got to kindle it. Somebody's got to keep it, Chris. Paul felt his own logs. Paul felt, now if you don't know, we're going back and forth with the Bible to what we're going through now in, in Christian life, right? In your life. Just in case I've lost anybody. Somebody had to keep the flame. Somebody had to keep prying it. Somebody had to keep poking it. Somebody had to keep keep the flames going, Kenny. And if you got a wood stove, somebody, you know how it works. You got to do the ashes. Somebody had to keep it going. 
Amen. Somebody had to keep it going. Now, this is the problem that we're at. The problem is we continue to shake stuff off of our life, but there is nothing to throw the viper into. Now, see, the problem is, is that we got so close to God, so on fire for God, we put our offering that we had into the flame, and it, yet it's what we're supposed to do. And because we put everything that we have, Chris, into the flame, and that flame got kindled up, and because of the heat of the flame, the snake got revealed. Now, the problem is with most Christians, most Christians, Chris, the thing is, is that after that flame begins to die down because of our, our laziness, our slothfulness, our, our unwillingness to, to, to serve where God's called us to serve or unwillingness to, to, to fast when he's called us to fast or to, to read or to pray when he's called us to read or to witness when he's called us whatever it may be because of that the flame has died down and because the flame has died down the viper is latched on and the viper comes and we shake it off into the flame. The viper comes and we shake it off but now it's to the point that we shake the viper off and there's no flame to there's no flame to put the viper in and we shake it off. We say it, just shake it off. Just shake it off. But notice in the story, Kenny, that he shook the viper off into the heat. But our problem sometimes is we get bit by the devil and we try to shake it off, but there's no heat to kill it. I said there's no heat to kill it. And we expect the, the fruition of the heat to kill something that, 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 that has latched on to us, but because there is no flame, there is no heat. Amen. Amen. So the question, Chris, is where is the fire? The question is where is the flame? The question is, is where is our offering, Kenny, to put into the fire? The question is, is who's going to be a keeper of the flame? Y'all remember I told you, thank you, Lord. You remember I told you when that, that witch come to the little church and she dropped that necklace thing on the pulpit and yeah. I hang this up for me. You, you remember that? And, 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 and I threw it away, and then I kept feeling I needed to burn that sucker for whatever reason. So I took that thing out of the trash can, and I, I, we built a fire out there and busted up the old altar and built a fire out of it and burnt that sucker. Y'all remember that? Yeah. And it spoke to me so clearly as I was poking the fire. Who's going to be the keeper of the flame? Oh, wow. I'll say that's just... That should want to stir you up. If you're if you're a born again Christian, that it alone should want to stir you up to be better. Who's going to be the keeper of the flame? Because the thing is, the flame was given to Paul and them. The flame's given to us from heaven. But the problem is, is oftentimes we let it die out, and because of not wanting to work, we'll let it die and go somewhere else where they got a flame. And the only thing God said is, listen, you put your logs that I've called you to into the flame and the fire that I've called you to. Put your logs into your fire. Amen. I want to throw this out here. God didn't just call us for deliverance. Are you ready? God did not call us just for deliverance. You ready? Amen. God called us for dominion. God didn't call his children just for deliverances or just to be a people. But God called us to be a people of dominion. That deliverance is part of it, but we're here to have dominion. Does that make sense? Deliverance is part of it, but God didn't call us just for the deliverance. But that here in this area, this church, we would have dominion. This region, this town, we would have dominion. Why do you think everybody can't be here? Everybody's not caught up on the rock. A lot of normal Christians couldn't handle the stuff, Kenny, that we went through. Even from the young pastor. They couldn't handle the torment, the pain, the crying, the tears, the hurt that we went through building this place and the love and the anger and the, the sweat and the money and the cuts and good Lord, Kenny's cut me to death and all this stuff that we, we go through. <laughs> What's dominion, Pastor? You know what dominion is? What, what, what do you mean dominion? Like you reign over an area. Dominion. Yeah, like, a place. Yeah, sure. No, like you, you reign over an area. A pl like government, of uh, dominion, government, dominion. Yeah, authority, authority over an area is what the meaning is. So, so we think that deliverance is all of it, but God's given us authority over the area. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. We got authority over the area of Bradshaw, over this building, over these people. We as Christians have dominion. God called us to, for the greater. So why do you think, Chris, that oftentimes people can't stay in the flame? Because it sometimes has a little work involved, Teresa. 
It ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It might have got handed to us, Chris. The flame might have been presented to us, but it's up to the children of God to keep crying, to keep poking, to be the keeper of the flame. That when the fire goes down, we can throw some coal on the fire. When the fire goes down, we can offer what we have, Chris. But I'm here to tell you, if we're not here to offer what we have, the flame will die because you're not in the post that God has called you to. And God's called you to this flame. But if you're not at this flame, when it's time for you to put what you have into the fire, that fire will die. Nobody else's fault but yours. Amen. Come on. I said it's nobody else's fault but yours. Because God's called you to put your logs into that fire. He didn't call. Come on. Amen. Does this make sense? And it might look great over there. But you go over long enough. And you realize that that flame's got to be poked over there just like it did here. Now I'm not just talking about other churches and other movements because it's all great. I'm talking, I'm talking even in your own life. I'll move on. How can we have dominion? This is questions I, I popped off in my mind. How can we have dominion if we allow the devil to run us off? Amen. How can we have dominion if we allow our flesh to speak louder than the spirit within inside of us to the point that he tells us what we're going to do? Yeah. The flesh tells the spirit what it's going to do. How many knows that's backward when it comes to kingdom? Yeah. The spirit's supposed to tell the flesh what it's going to do. Amen. Soon as the fire begins to blaze, the elements, the voices, cause us to stop. And soon, Chris, that flame will die down. This makes sense to everybody. Mm -hmm. We're caught up. Then soon it, it begins to die down. I, I jotted down some reasons uh, about a week ago, I guess, three days, four or five days ago. Uh, some things that seems like it's a main reason as to why uh, us as Christians, now listen. Us as Christians, we're held to a higher standard. Yes. Absolutely. Amen. 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 EJ, you call yourself a son of God. You're held to a higher standard. You can't just be a weakling no more. You can. You, you can and you'll fall through it, you know. And you're not planting like a mighty oak tree beside the rivers of Come on. And you'll fall to everything. You know what I'm saying? Amen. But he's called us to the greater as sons and daughters of God. We're more accountable. We're supposed to be warriors. What the Bible said, we're supposed to be men and women of valor. Somebody that can fight, stand when God needs us in the armors of my Lord, right? Yes. Many times we give a God the list of excuses. Oh, you won't believe. I guess as a pastor, everybody wants to tell you why I can't come to church. I'm like, you just come to church. But but I don't understand. I ain't, I ain't saying that. But, but, but I, I, you hear it all. And sometimes you're like, man. I bet if you stubbed your pinky toe, you won't come to church. <laughs> and I know it hurts. But but it seems like not just church, Michael, but just a little of stuff, Chris, can get us off course to what God has for us. Yeah. Just a little of stuff. Can, can, can I have a piece of that? Last <laughs> 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 